Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to sunny Clearwater, Florida. Um, we are here in the Cousin DIY studio today. Um, I'm going to be your teacher today. My name's Christine, and my friend Maggie's behind the scenes over here. Um, she's going to help answer any questions that you may have as we go along. Um, first things first, this e these are the earrings here that we'll be making. They're really, really cute. Um, just kind of a big statement earring. Um, I love a big earring. I wear big earrings all the time. Um, the cool thing about this is, you know, when you wear big earrings, sometimes they hurt your ears a little bit. So the great thing about these is they're made of foam. They're super lightweight. Um, you can make a whole slew of them with just one pack of these hearts. Um, another cool thing you can do with these little foam hearts, and this goes for any of the little foam shapes they have. Um, you can, if you want a cute little um, accessory for your shoe or for a purse, um, you can just easily crystallize um, a heart and it's peel and stick. So if you don't wanna make this permanent, you just peel it off, stick it on, it'll stay for the night. If you should want to make it more permanent, um, just use some a hot glue gun or some E6000. Um, but some really, really cute options. We've got one on the front and one on the back. All right. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, first thing is I'm going to go over all, all of the materials with you. Um, so if we can go ahead and get the camera um, on the downward view, we'll go ahead and get started. Thank you. All right. So for this, you're going to need a pack of these hearts here. These you can find in the um, kids craft section of the store. Like I said, they have some really, really cute options. Um, I did the hearts just because we wanted to do this for Valentine's Day. <clears throat> You're going to need your crystal glue um, and all of your bead landing crystals here. So for this particular style that I made, I used um, seven packs. Now, you don't have to use as many packs if you don't want as much bling. There's a lot of different options you can do. Um, you are definitely going to need some six millimeter jump rings, some earring posts, um, earring backs. Uh, if some people have them laying around, I do especially, um, but if not, they sell them in the jewelry department as well at Michael's. And then you definitely wanna get your wax tip jewel setter tool. This tool will save your life. Trust me. All right. So before we get started, I do want to show you there are a couple different options you can do to make earrings. If you didn't want to make such a big, long earring, um, I did a double heart just like this one here. So these this is just to kind of show you um, the different options you can do. This one I just kind of layered on top of another pink heart. Um, you could do just one heart and make it just a stud post. Um, that would be super cute too. So again, it's your personal preference. You you do you boo. So just make it how you want. Um, but we'll for this class purpose, we'll go ahead and do the version that you saw on the screen when you registered. All right. So our first step is going to be we're going to connect all of the hearts together with our six millimeter jump rings. So the one tool you will need is an awl. You just really need something kind of pointy. Um, you can use um, the Cricut weeding tool um, if you have one. This is a, a bead reamer. You can use an awl. Um, you can even use um, the tip of one of your forks. <laughs> so um, all you're going to do is we're going to put a hole right where that crease is in the heart. So we're just going to kind of line that up. We're gonna use our bead reamer here and we're gonna make a hole. So we're just gonna push that through. So we have a hole in the top of the red heart. Now in the white heart, we're going to do a hole in the bottom. So same thing, you wanna line it up with that point on the heart and just come up maybe like a millimeter or so and you're gonna poke through that, okay? And then on the white heart, you're gonna turn it 
to the top side. And again, in that little crease, you're going to make another hole. Okay. And then in our little pink one, we're just going to, on the bottom of the heart, we're going to make our little hole right at the point. Again, come up about one millimeter or so and just kind of make your hole there. All right. So now that we have the one side all punched through, you're going to take your six millimeter jump rings. Now, if you do have a tool, some pliers, um, you can use those. If you don't have them, you can use your fingers. So you're just going to, at the opening, you wanna hold one end and with your tools or with your other hand, you just wanna open it up, okay? So I've got the jump ring open now and I'm going to feed that through my red heart. Okay. Yeah, flip the camera to be closer. Sure. All right. I'm just going to pause for just a second so we can move our camera a little bit closer for y'all. How's that? Is that better? All right. So now that we've got our jump ring through our red heart here, we're going to take our white heart and the bottom hole that we punched, we wanna make that closure of the jump ring to the back of the earring. So we're going to feed this onto the front here. The hearts are actually foam. Um, they're foam hearts and they have this kind of paper backing on them. So if you peeled that paper backing off, you'd be able to stick it like I did here. Um, they're easily removable, so watch this. I can just take this off if I wanted to, um, but if I wanted to make that more permanent, I could use some E6000 um, or a hot glue gun. But yes, these are foam hearts. Leave the paper on this side. We don't wanna peel that off, otherwise they're gonna stick to your, your neck. <laughs> All right, so now that we have the white heart, um, fed onto our jump ring, we're gonna go ahead and close that jump ring up. So with one of end on the jump ring, just use your tool and the other end, you can use your fingers. And we're just gonna close that up. Christine, Lena asks, um, because she joined a little late, if the holes are there already. So Lena, no, they are not. Um, but let me show you just very quickly. Um, all you're gonna do is you're gonna take um, a, some kind of sharp tool. Um, it can be like a Cricut weeding tool. This is um, a bead reamer. You can use an awl. Um, you can use the tip of a fork, just something sharp. And you're going to wanna just poke the hole in until you get your sharp tool all the way to the other side, like so, okay? And that's how you make your little hole. All right, so now I'm gonna take another six millimeter jump ring and we're gonna repeat the same step. We're gonna open it and we're gonna feed it through the top of the white heart. Now we're gonna grab our little pink heart. And again, you, wanna, you want the closure of the jump ring to be on the back side of the earring. So you're gonna feed your pink heart kind of onto the front side. I can get it on. There we go. And then with your tool, just kind of move your jump ring around so that you can close it. And I'm just using my tool and then my fingers. And now they are all connected. So now we're gonna go ahead and start crystallizing them. This is the fun part. <laughs> all right, so. We're gonna go ahead and start with our little teeny tiny heart here. Um, so for that heart, I used um, a pack of the Volcano here. Um, and these are actually, they're really small. So they're nail crystals, um, but you can use them for anything. They're just a smaller size crystal. 
And then we're going to use our fuchsia and light rose crystals. Um, so these here are actually um, hot fix crystals, which can be used um, on fabric applications with a hot fix tool. However, you can still use them with glue, uh, which is really great. So, um, so we're gonna go ahead and open these two packs up here. Let me open this volcano pack here. And I'm going to just dump them in here. All right. So make sure just get your kind of tool ready, um, your gem picker upper tool. We're going to add a little bit of glue. So what I like to do is I kind of just start right here at this little crease. And I kind of just make my way around the heart. The glue doesn't have to look pretty. The great thing about this glue is that it dries clear. So, I, I mean, I wouldn't recommend glopping it on, but if you, if you do put a little too much, it's okay. You're not gonna ruin it. So then what I like to do is I just use my finger and I kind of just pat the glue in. Christine, Mom Cats 5 wants to know how long will they last? The earrings? Um, well, I mean, just with any piece of jewelry, the better you take care of it, the longer it will last. Um, remember, these are foam, so just be gentle with them. But um, I've been wearing the pair that I've had for probably about a week now. And I mean, they still look as good as the day that I wear them. Um, I'm, I will say I am very rough with my jewelry. Um, so yeah, that would be my best suggestion is just as long as you're taking care of them, um, putting them, you know, putting them back in an, um, a jewelry designated jewelry spot. Um, that's usually what I do. Um, you sh they should last for, for a while. So, all right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to just kind of use some of our smaller crystals in this pack. And then in the volcano pack, we're just going to be using the fuchsia and the actual volcano color. So we're gonna use our crystal tool here and we're just gonna start placing the crystals on. So your very first crystal, you wanna put in kind of that, that indention in the heart. So that's gonna be our starting point. And from there, you're just going to keep kind of going around that edge. So hopefully you guys can see this. I'm sorry, my fingers are so, so big. <laughs> um, so yeah, so you just want to use your, your fuchsia ones. Um, however, it's your, it's your a pair of earrings. So if you like the, the violet color better, go ahead and use that. Um, I'm just using the pink because that is what I did for the actual project. Christine, Sandy wanted to know how wide is the largest heart? Um, I would say it's about an inch and a half width. Yeah, these are great questions. So keep them coming. Thank you guys. We love questions. Yes, questions are always good. Um, so I would love to know where is everybody from? San Diego. What? Yeah. Melanie's from Texas. Nice. And Cindy's from Cincinnati. We have New Hampshire, Canada, Cincinnati. Oh, Sandy says it's snowing here in Indiana. Oh my gosh. And we have Jennifer from Sacramento, California. Very cool. Well, I really thank you guys for joining us today. I'm so excited to be with you all and show you this technique. Um, and I think once you figure out how to do it, it's really, really super easy. Um, I feel like you're going to have crystals on everything. Maribel is joining us from Puerto Rico. Oh my gosh. Wow. Hi. And Sandy's in Colorado. Oh, I love Colorado. Welcome everybody. Yes. Welcome again. Thank you for all for being here very much. 
All right, so I am just kind of continuing around on my little heart here, just kind of going around the edge. Um, and again, if you don't want as much bling on your earrings or, you know, sparkle, that's okay. You don't have to use as many. You can just maybe put a few here and there. Um, these are your earrings. So whatever you want to do is up to you. So we're just gonna keep continuing on the outside edge of this heart. Earlier, Sandy said that this looks like a diamond painting tool. <laughs> It's very, very similar. Um, I have done crystal projects in the past where I have not used a tool and it can be very frustrating. So I would highly, highly recommend getting the tools you need um, because you don't wanna get frustrated. I feel like some people get frustrated with it and then they never wanna you know, attempt it again. And, it is super easy. It really does make a statement. Um, and these big earrings are so like on trend right now. Like I said, I love a big earring. Um, but I am an 80s baby, so. <laughs> All right. Lena asks, when you pick up the rhinestone, are you picking it up with the silver on the tool or the jewel side onto the tip of the tool? So you wanna pick it up on the actual top of the crystal. So I don't know if you can see here, but this is, you want all your crystals to be kind of facing upward. So that way it's very, very easy just to pick it up. And then that way the bottom is already ready to go and you just set it down. Does that answer your question? If not, let me know. I'm gonna do my best. Oh, awesome, okay, great. So now I'm gonna just go in and kind of fill in with a few of the larger crystals from my Fuchsia Light Rose pack. And again, you're just gonna use your little crystal picker upper, place those on. Um, I think I'm gonna add some of this volcano color. Um, this is a really pretty color. It adds a lot of um, shimmer. It kind of changes different colors when um, you turn it and different light hits it actually one of my favorite colors. Another good thing about using these kind of pre-cut foam shapes is they already have the glitter on them. So a lot of times um, when you are, I should say when I am doing a crystallized project, I usually paint it and then glitter it the same color of the crystals that I'm going to be using. Um, and that just helps it. So once the glue dries, it really, really makes it pop. Um, so I would highly recommend um, doing that if you do another crystal project. Um, it just really, really makes a difference as opposed to it just being on kind of like a, a dull background. Okay. So let's see, I think I can maybe fit one more little pink one in here. I think my glue dried up on me. So I'm just gonna add another little dab. And you do kind of want your glue to be a little bit tacky when you're setting your crystals. Um, it just makes the crystal easier to come off your wax tip of your crystal tool here. Um, so if you just wait, just, I mean, 30 seconds and it's, it's gonna be tacky. So that would, that will help out a lot too. Cindy Walker says, you are so talented. I would have to use my crystal katana for small stones this small. <laughs> yes, a crystal katana is super, super helpful. Um, if you have one, awesome. Um, for those of you that don't have one, um, these do work good. I Again, I would recommend 
getting some kind of um, jewel setter. Um, the katana is a great one. Um, and then again, this one, if you just kind of want to try it out, but having the right tools um, is really, really going to help tremendously. All right. So now that I have my pink heart done, I'm going to move on to my white heart here. So for the white heart, I've used um, the SS16 crystals. And then I used um, a pack of the 12, 16, and 20, um, the multi-pack of crystals. So let me just get that open here. Lena asks, how heavy does the earring become with all the embellishments as an example? Um, not heavy at all. You would be so surprised. And that's, that's why I really love using these foam shapes, especially for earrings. Um, like I said, I love big, big earrings. Um, but a lot of times they are so heavy that, you know, you can only wear them for a certain amount of time. Um, these are so lightweight. I mean, I literally don't even feel like I have any on right now. Um, so even with the crystals added, they, it doesn't bring any, any weight at all to it. So, all right, so we're gonna do the same thing on the white heart. So we're gonna start kind of at the top and just kind of do a little outline around the heart with our glue. And then you can kind of fill in the middle. Tip, <laughs> always put your lid back on after you use your glue. Um, these pins are great, but they do get clogged um, if you don't put that top back on because the air gets in um, and then dries the glue in the little pin tip. So just a, just a tip. So, okay. So now that we have our glue on, um, again, I'm just gonna kind of pat this down. I'm gonna let that glue get a little bit tacky. And then I'm going to do the same process again. I'm going to kind of outline it with these SS16s here. So again, you're gonna put one right at the crease there of the top of the heart and just kind of work your way around. On these, we did, we, you know, like I said before, we put crystals on the whole thing. You don't have to. If you just want a little bit of sparkle, totally fine. Just kind of spread them out a little bit. Um, it's, still gonna, it's still gonna sparkle when it's on your ear. Um, I just really like a lot of sparkle. <laughs> Never met a sparkle I didn't like. True story. Don't ask my husband. Um, has anyone, did anyone on here take our first class that we did with the Christmas ornament? I'm just curious. No, not yet. Wow, oh, that's great then. These are, you, you guys are all new to, to Cousin and that's so awesome. Even better. Have, has anyone ever, has anyone taken a class period before? Is this your first class, second class? Then I shall look up the last one. Oh, sweet. Oh, with the hashtags. Oh, yeah. If anyone ends up making this project, please use our hashtags so we can see. Yes, very important. So we definitely want to see those projects. So hashtag make it with Michaels, um, hashtag create with cousin um, and then hashtag cousin DIY. We would love to see them. Cynthia wants to know if the class from um, the last class is still available to look up. Um, I believe so. I believe all of the previous classes are all can all be found on YouTube. Um, Chanel, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, they, they can be found on YouTube, correct? Yes, on Michael's YouTube. 
Perfect. Yes. So any any previous class, um, whether it's you know jewelry making, painting, um, those can all be found on Michael's YouTube channel. So now that I have kind of that outline, um, I'm going to go start filling it in on the inside here. Whoops. After I drop it. But it shows how stable it is. None of them fell off. Nope, they did not. So this, you can do whatever you'd like. You're just kind of basically just filling in the center now. Um, I like to use all different sizes here. Um, I just think it looks, I don't know. Some people like to, when they're crystallizing, like to just keep it consistent with just one size, but I like using multiple sizes. I think it gives it um, a little bit more dimension, but I mean, whatever you, whatever you like is fine. Christine, Cindy Walker Tate wanted to know, is this a fast drying glue or do you still have time to adjust your stones? So yes, you do have, I would say at least 10 minutes before you, before it really gets hardened. However, I will say this, this is a great glue. So even if it does completely dry um, and you don't like the way it looks, it's very easily, you can take it off just by picking it off. Um, I actually made a shirt yesterday um, that I was crystallizing and I did not like the way <laughs> the uh, rainbow looked of uh, some of the colors I used. So I literally just picked them all off and started over and you can't even tell. So, so yeah, you definitely have some wiggle room before it dries. Um, and then even again, if it does dry, it's not a big deal. And then Lena asked, can you use this technique with hats? Oh, most definitely. So what we're doing right now, this is the technique. So you're basically putting on the glue, you're letting it get tacky, and then you're putting your crystals on. And this, this can be used on anything, hats, shoes, belts, whatever you're making. All you're doing is gluing and placing your stones. Um, obviously different uh, materials sometimes require different glues, um, but the glue that we are using, um, I will say it's probably one of the best that I've personally ever used. Um, it dries clear, it holds up very strong, but at the same time, if I do make a mistake, it is forgivable. <laughs> Says, love it so many possibilities oh girl you have no idea i am Cindy says she's going to pick up the glue oh sweet even better i'm working on a pair of boots right now actually with i'm using some star foam shapes that are silver glittered already and i'm just crystallizing those and i'm putting them on some some platform boots and I am so excited to wear them. So awesome. yes, the possibilities are endless. You can literally crystallize anything. I am crystallizing a tape dispenser um, for someone as well. <laughs> so anything is possible. Um, all right, so now, now that I've kind of got my white heart filled in, we'll go ahead and we'll move to the red heart here. So same process again. We're gonna use our glue pen. And since this heart is a little bit bigger, we're not gonna do the full glue on the heart. So this one, since it is a little bit more surface area, um, we're gonna work in kind of small sections. So we're gonna start at our point again, and we're just kind of gonna outline. And then I'm gonna fill in, I'll say half the heart this time. Gotta put our top back on our glue pen. And again, with our finger, we just kind of want to pat this down. Um, again, the glue, your flatbacks will stick better if the glue is a little bit tacky. So now I'm going to use my Siam and Light Siam multi-pack. It's an SS12, a 16 and a 20 size. Um, the ones that I did before, I have the mixture in there. So you, as you can see, there's like a dark red and then a lighter red. Um, 
it's your preference. If you like both, awesome. If you just want to use one red um, instead of the other, then that's fine too. Um, you may have to buy more crystals uh, if you do that, but hey, it's your, it's your earring project. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to start with an SS20 and we're going to put that on our point just like we did on the others. And then we're going to work our way around the edge. So I'm just going to start placing. And since this is a bigger heart, it doesn't matter which size you do along the edge. Um, like I said, I like to mix up the sizes. The smaller hearts, it's a little better to use the um, smaller crystals to make your edging first, um, but you don't have to. It's not, it's not like it's something that's set in stone, so. So I'm just gonna make my way around. Um, and I, if you guys love this class, um, please tune in. We're gonna be doing another class, uh, making an Easter project on March 17th. So um, if, you're, if you wanna celebrate St. Patrick's Day early with us and make an Easter project, um, please make sure to join us for that class. Again, that's on March 17th. Okay, so I'm making my way. Melanie says, yay, that will be fun. Yay, good. Hope you all can make it. I know, I'll be there. <laughs> these are my favorites. Sandy asks, could these crystals be baked in polymer clay? Hmm, uh, that is a really good question. I'm going to say yes, because they are glass. Um, however, I, we can get more clarification on that. Um, just because obviously I wouldn't want you to stick these in your oven if I'm not 100% sure. I would say I'm about 98% sure you can. Um, but let us get you an answer for that. Um, we will make sure to get that to you. Um, ASAP. So Cindy Walker Tate um, confirms too that glass crystals can be baked in polymer and she has done it. Thank you. There you go. Thanks, Cindy Walker Tate. <laughs> that is one thing I have not done a lot of is use the polymer clay. I've always wanted to try it. All right, now that we kind of have our edge there, we're just gonna, again, start kind of filling that in. Um, I like to use my smaller crystals in any of like the small gaps that I can't put a big crystal in. And again, like you can do so many different options just with this one pack of hearts. Um, I think it'd be so fun to do like a little Galentine's party and, you know, make earrings or something fun like that. You know, I am totally inspired to do that. <laughs> uh, make sure I'm invited, please. Absolutely. Galentine's <laughs> Day, I love that idea. All right, so I'm just kind of working my way down. I feel like I need another little crystal right here. Lena wanted to know, um, where do you buy your tool to pick up the crystals? So everything, um, this tool especially, um, you can buy at Michael's. Um, they have it in store. Um, this is kind of what the packaging looks like here. So you, it comes in a three pack. Um, I wanna say it's like $5.99 for the three pack. Um, but I would really, really recommend getting one, um, especially even if you're just kind of starting this out or trying it out. It's a great tool, um, not just for crystals, but if you're, you know, making jewelry or, you know, 
whatnot. It's, it's just really handy to have. Um, and again, it will help with your frustration level because um, picking up crystals with tweezers or your fingers is extremely hard. <laughs> Sandy had a good idea. She said you could hang them on a little tree or in a window for lots of sparkle. Oh my gosh, yes, you totally could. That's a great idea. Little uh, like sun catcher kind of. Valentine's trees have become really popular, I think, too. Yeah, yeah. You could thread some monofilament through your little holes you made and hang them on your Valentine's tree or uh, hang them on your sun catcher by, for your window. <clears throat> All right, so now I'm just going to do the other side of my heart. So again, we're just gonna edge it and then kind of fill it in. And then I'm going to kind of pat it down. And you'll see, I'm, you know, I'm very messy. I'm getting glue on the other crystals. Um, again, this drew, this drew, this glue dries so clear. Um, it's really great and it's very forgiving um, because I am a very messy crafter. Don't come to my house. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now we're going to just kind of start placing crystals around the other side. When you buy the glue, um, the glue comes with two of these little triangle trays, um, which is great for your crystals when you're working. So um, it's a good value. So if we make these earrings, who's gonna wear them? I hope somebody actually wears them. Dina says me. Is anyone doing the tutorial with us? Cynthia Jones says she'll wear them. Yay! Good deal. Yes, and yes, Robin Moss is doing the class with us as we go. Oh, awesome. Very cool. Sandy wants to know, are you on Instagram? Um, I am. Um, I am under uh, Katie Emerald 524. And cousin is under cousin DIY. Yes, and we always have great projects, not just um, crystallized projects, but we do a lot of kids crafts projects on there, um, jewelry making projects. So check us out. Just love how these are coming out. They're so cute. So oh, they're so easy. I would love to get this as a gift. <laughs> Good idea. You could totally gift these. Oh, 100%. I always love a handmade gift to begin with. Um, but special. yeah, if it looks like this, psh, bonus. I think I'm going to try the shoe idea, putting them on some shoes. For yes, me, absolutely. And again, if you just use this, this foam shapes here, a lot of them are peel and stick. So you just peel off the backing um, and you can stick it on. So that way, if you don't want to make it permanent, you can just peel it right back off. Um, or if you do want to make it permanent, um, again, just glue it, glue it down. So. You can put it on a belt, on a purse, on a hat. Cynthia Jones says, I wanted to watch you first and then I'm getting the items to make so I'll know what I'm doing. Ah, yes. Please share your projects when you're done. All right, so, oh, sorry. 
So now that we have all of our kind of crystals glued down, um, you want to give it, you know, before you actually wear them, I would say give it a good hour to dry. Um, but again, this is going to dry very quickly. So we're just going to flip this over now. And on our back side, we're going to go ahead and take one of our earring posts that we got. And again, these you can find in the jewelry department at Michael's. So we're gonna take our glue gun. I've had mine kind of heating up here. So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue here. Be careful you don't burn yourself. And then you're going to stick the post right here on this top little pink heart, kind of in the top center. Okay, you're just gonna let that dry. Um, and yeah, and then you're gonna put your earring back on and you can wear these. I would say again, give it about an hour to let the glue completely dry. Um, the ones that I've been wearing here, I'll take it off and show you. Um, I did kind of a similar, so I did just a red heart and then the larger pink heart um, and I've been wearing these for about a week and they've held up really nicely. So I love them. I've already gotten many compliments on them. <laughs> so, um, all right. So that is the first, you know, the first one, um, you're going to repeat those steps on your second one. So for anyone that joined a little late, um, I'll kind of walk you through kind of the very first beginning steps. Um, but the crystallization part is literally the same. Um, so you're going to take your awl, um, your bead reamer, your, whatever your sharp instrument is, and we're going to poke a hole in the top center of the red heart and just kind of give it a good push. Make sure that pointy object was all the way through. Cynthia Jones wanted to know how big is the bag of hearts? Oh, it's actually really big. It's 55 pieces. So it gives you these little small ones. It gives you um, like a medium sized one. And then it gives you these larger sizes. So again, like so many options. If you just wanted to do a little stud, you could take one of the middle sized or the smaller sized one, crystallize it, glue a back on it, and boom, you've got a really cute little just stud earring. Um, this is kind of the more of the one that I did for myself um, is just, well, as I should say, I used the medium heart with the large heart, but these here have the small heart with the large heart. Um, and then this here, um, I just kind of like layered on top of each other. Um, yeah, which could make a really cool design too, because then you've kind of got a two kind of layer look, um, which would really stand out. Carla says, love it. Yes, awesome. I'm so glad. Um, yeah, so going back to this, so now we're going to take our medium white heart and we're going to poke holes in the bottom and we're going to poke it in the top center. So let's do our bottom first. So again, you're just gonna go right, maybe a millimeter up from that tip of the point, and you're just gonna poke that through. And then we're gonna go to the indention at the top of the heart, and same thing. We're going to poke that through. Okay. And then we're gonna do our last little heart here and that you wanna do at the bottom point. So we're gonna poke that. Just be careful, don't poke your fingers. <laughs> All right. So now that we have that done, um, we're gonna go back to putting in our jump rings. And again, I'm using the six millimeter jump rings. Um, they come in silver or gold. Um, I wanna say they even come in like a gunmetal. So really whatever plating color you prefer, you could use. Um, and again, these are the six millimeter. So I'm just going to take my, this is a three in one tool, but you can use um, pliers or you can use tweezers um, or you can just use your fingers. 
So I'm gonna hold one end with my fingers and the other with my pliers. And I'm just going to open that jump ring up, going to take my red heart, and I'm going to feed my jump ring through that little hole we made at the top of the heart. Kind of rotate that through. Then I'm going to take my white heart and at the bottom point, um, we want the closure of the jump ring to face the back of the earring. So that's why you're going to thread it on in the front. And then you're gonna, again, just take your tool and kind of rotate your jump ring until you can get that to the top here. And you're gonna go ahead and just close that. So grab it with your other side of your hand. And then with the tool, you can go ahead and close that. And then we're gonna take another jump ring, open it up, and we're gonna feed it through the top of this white heart. Okay. And then we're going to grab our little pink heart and we're going to just feed that again. We want that closure of the jump ring to the back of the earring. So then that's going to get fed through. If I can get it. I think my hole got a little off. There we go. All right. So then we're going to bring that again towards the top and go ahead and close that jump ring. And now that they're all connected, um, you can go ahead and start crystallizing them. Um, the last one we started at the top with our pink heart. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and we'll start there as well. So go ahead and just outline the whole top of your heart. And then you can kind of dab a little in the middle. Again, the glue doesn't have to look pretty just has to, has to get there. <laughs> Take your finger, kind of tap it out. Let the glue get a little tacky. And then we're gonna go in with our little tiny crystals here. This is the volcano pack. And we're gonna use the little ones to kind of give our little heart an outline. So you're gonna start at, oops, I dropped it. You're gonna start at the top. that top point and you're going to put your crystal right there. So that's gonna be your starting point. And then we're just gonna go around the edge of that little heart and just start placing crystals. And then once you get done with that, um, you will just kind of fill in the center. So the volcano pack comes um, with a tanzanite crystal, the actual volcano color, um, which is like a, it's like a purpley orange. Um, it's, a, it's a beautiful color. It changes um, with the direction um, of the light. Um, and then it comes with a fuchsia. So on these earrings, we did not use the tanzanite color. However, if you like that color better, use it. And we're just gonna keep going around. So yeah, so this right here, this is just a very basic technique of how you can crystallize something. Um, you can literally crystallize anything. Um, I've crystallized a remote control before. Oh. Um, so you can do silly things. <laughs> Or you can do, you know, fashion forward things. I love, um, I love doing um, crystals on denim jackets. I think that looks so great. I love doing them on shoes, um, especially like on the heels. Um, just so, so many things you can do just with this basic technique. 
So I, I really encourage you guys, like once you're done, like really think about, ooh, what have I always wanted to, you know, to add sparkle to? Is it, maybe it's a shirt you already have or, you know, a remote control or a tape dispenser, who knows? But I would really challenge you just to try it out, you know? It's, it's very forgiving. So. Lena says she's enjoying this project so much and she just placed an order on all the items except she could not find the tool. Oh no, you couldn't find the, the setter tool? Let me give you the specific item number. Um, so this says it is 224667 and it is called Wax Tip Jewel Setters. So hopefully maybe that will help. And then Jennifer says, I do crystallized on t-shirts for a hobby. Ah, oh, love that. That is amazing. And do you use um, glass flatbacks for those? And thank you to Melanie for providing the link to the tool. Ah, oh, thank you, Melanie. Well, I am really, really thankful for all of you guys for tuning in. Um, I'm just, I'm so in awe that, you know, we had as, you know, many registrations as we did. And I'm just so thankful for that. And um, really, really thank you guys for, for being here with me today. And Maggie, um, I've really enjoyed, you know, talking to you guys and, and walking you through this project. And I really, really hope to see some of your projects, please. We have a couple more questions before we go. Absolutely. Cindy Jones wanted to know, can we put the crystals on all the hearts, let them dry and then hook them together? So you can do that. However, um, sometimes if you wait to put the jump ring through, you may already have a crystal placed there. Um, so if you have them all connected in the beginning, um, it just makes it easier to get your crystals placed. Um, but if you would like to try it that other way, I mean, there's no harm in trying it. Um, but yeah, so. And then MomCat5 wanted to know how washable are these on fabric? Um, so the foam, no, they are not washable on fabric. Um, the crystals are. So if, especially if you use um, the hot fix crystals, so with the hot fix, um, there's a special layer of um, glue on the back of a hot fix crystal. And then once that glue heats up, it actually melds into the fabric. So once that is melded into the fabric, you're good. You can launder that item and your crystals will never fall off. Um, now, if you are gluing them, um, you just have to be a little more gentler um, with the laundering process. Um, hand washing, um, taking it to a dry cleaner. Um, that would be my recommendation um, for fabric use. Lana came a little late. She wanted to uh, have you show the glue again one more time. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So we're just going to take our glue pin here. The glue? Yeah. Oh, the glue. So this is part of the Austrian crystal set. So this is the bead landing. Um, crystal radiance glue. So it comes with the glue pen and two of these uh, little triangle trays. Um, and then the, the item number for this is 682691. Again, this is a great, great glue. Um, very forgiving, sturdy. Uh, it dries clear. This is really the only glue that I use um, now. So when we put a little bit down, we're just going to kind of outline the heart first. Now, if you are working on a bigger project, I would recommend working in small sections, um, but something small like this, we can go ahead and just kind of put the glue down and then you're gonna kind of just add a little bit in the center here. And then you're going to take your finger and just kind of pat that glue down. It's, it helps if the glue is a little tacky. 
And just a reminder to anybody who's late, this class will be on Michael's Webster YouTube after 24 or 48 hours. So you can catch it again. Um, any more questions before we have to sign off here? A bunch of people say, thank you so much. Oh, Jennifer wanted to know if um, the backing, if I wanted the backing to be sturdier and remove the paper backing and put something else down, glue, dimensional, mod, podge, would that work? Oh, absolutely. Um, I actually thought about maybe using um, some felt, you know, like if I traced around the heart and then cut out the felt and then put the felt on the back. Yeah, you could totally use something else on the back of that. Um, so that that way the paper, you know, you wouldn't chance the paper peeling off. And Irene wanted to know what tool did you use to make the hole? Um, I used um, the, I used a bead reamer, but you can use um, an awl you can use um, a Cricut weeding tool. Um, just You just need something that's got um, a sharp end, so. And then Lena wanted to know, what is the project for Easter? Um, so I believe it's going to be um, a really cute Easter bow, um, but we're still kind of in the mix. So if anyone has any suggestions, please let me know and I'd be happy to, to do that, so. Um, all right, so I think if we want to cut, oh, awesome, okay. So anyway, um, again, thank you guys so, so much for joining. And again, my name is Christine. Uh, this is the Cousin DIY Studio. And please, I want to see your projects. Um, hashtag make it with Michaels. Um, thank you guys so much. And don't let anyone dull your sparkle. Bye. <laughs>